Glide recently released an update to its Zapier integration, making it much easier to be able to interact with your Glide data from 7,000 different applications. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Let's go ahead and check out the Zapier integration through the lens of a couple different use cases. For this first use case, let's pretend that we're an IT department within a small business, and we want to be able to take a new employee in our employee directory and be able to provision different accounts for them. And it's not just as a Glide user, it's other things as well. But wouldn't it be really handy if we could just simply click a button and make them a new Glide user? So Zapier has these new Zapier tables, which let us house multiple pieces of information. And this could be from different systems. And so we're just going to have this button here that will set up to trigger this Zap to provision this John Johnson, a new employee as a user. I can create a new Zap and our trigger is going to be when a trigger Zap button is clicked from Zapier tables. So you can go through here and our table ID in this case is just going to be our employee directory. And we're going to use this trigger button that we're currently in the process of setting up to add the user to this Glide app. We can press continue and we'll use this record that we have for John Johnson. Next, you'll want to add a step here and we're going to search for Glide. You can click on that. That's going to be the new integration that we have. We can choose from an event. So we see add row, delete row, edit row, and then we can get all rows and get row. In this particular case, we are going to add a row. We're creating a new user. A user in this case is just a row in the users table, but we could do other things as well. If we want it to be a new contact record, it could be a new row in our contacts table. So let's click add row and continue. So if you haven't already added your API key here, what you need to do back in your application is go to settings then here you can click on integrations and from integrations, you'll be able to add Zapier as one of the integrations. And you'll see this area where you can copy your API key. Once you copy that, you can come back into Zapier, paste that in. And that's essentially going to say, okay, we've got permission to be able to write this data into Glide. From here, we can press continue. And now we can choose which app it is that we want to write this into. So you'll see a list of your available apps. We're just gonna use this demo company CRM. And then here's where we have access to our different tables. So I've got contacts, but I also have our users table. And the nice thing is that it knows the different context of the columns that we have inside of Glide. So here's where we can add any of the values. So in this case, we'll add a name and we'll insert the data. This is where we can get information about this user's name. I might have to scroll down a little bit or we can search. Let's click on John Johnson. Here we'll put in the email address for the user and we'll map their title as well. Now we could, of course, add several other values, including other custom columns that you've added. From here, let's press continue and we can test our step. And you can see our test step comes back with a row ID, which means it was successfully able to create that new row. And so if we look back in Glide, we can see this has added a new row to our user table. And so we can grant this person access depending on how we've configured our app. So at this point, all you need to do is publish your Zap. And now back in Zapier tables, we can see that our button is hooked up to this Zap, meaning anytime we click this for a new employee that comes into the system, we can automatically add them to their respective apps. So how about a use case where we actually want to start with an action inside of Glide and be able to kick it out to a Zap out side of Glide. Well, that's going to be a great use case for a webhook. So for this particular example, we have these contracts and we want to be able to click a button, have that trigger our process to create a contract for us. So here I've actually created two different buttons. One is to view the agreement and one is to create the agreement. What I've done here is I've added some visibility rules here. So we're showing this component when the document is empty. That's going to be where we're actually storing the URL so we can reference it later. Or the other one is going to show when it has a value in it. So we're only going to show one of these buttons at a given time, but we want to be able to generate this contract as the first thing we do. Over here in our general settings, we're going to actually hook this up to an action that we're creating. So that's going to be under our actions here. And we've got one for creating this contract in Pandadoc. We've got this based on that user interaction with our contracts. And for this, we're going to use trigger a webhook. So in Zapier, we're setting up a new Zap and we'll call this create Pandadoc from Glide. And our trigger that we're going to use is going to be a webhook by Zapier. Here for our event, we can use catch hook, press continue, press continue again. And this is going to give us this unique URL, which we're going to copy. And now we're going to paste this in where we have the URL. So we'll click on custom 
and we'll paste what Zapier has given us. Now here's where we can choose different values that we want to be able to send along so that when we trigger this from our button, it's sending the actual information from the contract or from the person who's signing the agreement or information about the company. To do that, you'll see this area for request body. You can add different values. So this is these key value pairs the first part is going to be what this is called. And so you can type in text and give it a name. And then for the value itself, this is where you can choose these different options to put that in dynamically. So if you wanna have the start date of the agreement, you could click on that. That's going to send this information across. So let's go ahead and test this out. We've got this button to generate agreement. We'll click that. And now we should be able to go back into Zapier, click to test the trigger. And you'll see that it's now sent the information across. We have the different fields based on the record we were on when we click that button. We can continue with our selected record. And next, let's add a step to create the agreement itself. So we're doing this with Pandadoc, but you can do it with a number of different services. Here, we're going to create a document from a template. You'll wanna make sure you authenticate. And then here's where we could choose from a template. You'll wanna make sure to map any relevant fields that you have. So in this case, the signer email is going to be that fraser at macro.com. We can plug in any of those values that came via the webhook. Let's go ahead and press continue. And here we can test the step. From here, we can see that it actually generated this document. We have a document ID. If we scroll down a little bit, we see that we've got this recipients shared link we're gonna go ahead and grab that. And you can see if we open up this URL, this is actually the link to the document itself. So wouldn't it be great if we then took that value and updated it back inside of Glide. Here's where we'll add a step, search again for Glide. And this time our event is going to be, instead of adding a row like we did last time, in this case, we want to be able to edit a row. We want to be able to update an existing record that we have. We'll plug in our company CRM. From our tables, we're going to choose our contracts. But uh-oh, this is a key part here. It's asking for a row ID. Well, why is it asking for a row ID? Because it needs to know that unique row of which one to update. It's easy enough when we're adding a new record. It doesn't need to know the context of an existing record. So anytime we want to make an update or an edit to an existing record, we need to make sure that we have the row ID. And then here we can actually grab that value of the row ID because we need that if we want to perform the update. Now, once you've rerun that test, you'll see this as a value for that row ID that we can insert. And in this case, the only thing we really need to update is the document column. So here we can do that by pulling the value that we have from Pandadoc and inserting that recipient's shared link. And now back in Glide, it's automatically updated our URL that's in the document and it's updated the UI. Remember, we had those two different buttons. So now we have a button where we can click to view the agreement and it's going to open up the URL of our agreement. Now we showed a couple of examples about what we can do by adding rows and editing rows. You can also delete a row if you want to. One of the things I found interesting is we've got get all rows and get row. So if you wanna look up some information based on an ID and pull it back, you can do it. Now for get all rows, there is one feature request I'd have, and that is instead of getting all the rows for a table, because here again, we can specify the company app and we could pull back the contacts, but I'd really like an ability to query part of that table so that we could only have contacts or whatever rows that we have, we could filter it so we're not getting all of the data back. Right now, I don't think this is probably the most performant way to do it. It's certainly a great start that we can pull that information, but I think in the future, it'd be really nice if we could query a subset of that data. I hope this has been helpful for you to see a couple different use cases when it comes to the new Zapier integration for Glide. If you have any questions about your own Glide project, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.